back to uh, follow up to talk some more about uh, conductive ink. If uh, you took a look at the last video, uh, we talked about how layering the ink is one uh, option to uh, lower the resistivity, raise the, uh, the conductivity of the ink. But it got me thinking there's uh, probably other things that we should be concerned about, not the least of which is the, the uh, conductivity of the basic material, the carbon we're using. Uh, in uh, those videos, we uh, tried a couple different carbons, one that was labeled at least uh, 5 micron uh, flake graphite, and the other one kind of an unknown uh, in terms of size or conductivity graphite. But in my uh, shop here, I gathered up uh, three other carbons, uh, an activated carbon uh, that I've run through a coffee grinder to uh, kind of pulverize, and then that uh, same activated carbon that's had extensive uh, ball milling on it to uh, uh, really powder it up nice and fine. And then I've also uh, got some uh, carbon black. We're going to report out uh, the numbers on the uh, resistivity of those five different materials so that in the future we've got a way, if not on an absolute basis, at least on a relative basis, to uh, see if uh, material A is better or worse than B, or even if uh, the batch that you buy today or make today of A is uh, better or worse than uh, what you were purchasing a month ago. Uh, to do that, we put together a couple more little uh, test fixtures I'll briefly describe and then share the numbers with you. Uh, this is the classic square resistance probe that we use to measure the uh, surface resistivity of conductive inks or paints. But then, if I'm trying to measure just the powders, some, uh, you know, just the, uh, uh, the graphite powders, I could stick a couple probes in there, but that's not very repeatable or, uh, uh, you know, consistent to tell me how good this raw material is. So we came up with a couple different uh, test fixtures here. Both of them uh, are similar in the fact that we have a uh, defined area here, actually a defined volume, uh, about three quarters of an inch square. On the bottom of this, you can't see it quite now, but there is a, uh, um, actually in this one here, is the one I want to be talking about first. In the bottom of this, there's a uh, uh, copper plate uh, connected to this uh, contact member here. And then we have a mating cube that goes in this, uh, opening on the top here, also a copper plate on the bottom of that. So you can see what we're going to do here is fill this up with a carbon material, uh, whether it's a graphite or activated carbon or whatever, uh, gently reassemble the, uh, the two plates on top and the bottom, and then apply a pressure uh, to the material to uh, compress it and then we can measure the bulk resistivity, as I'm calling it, between the resistance between the plate on the bottom on the inside and the plate on the, uh, the square plunger on top. So depending on how hard we push or what uh, force we can put on it when we no longer get any movement or compression will give us a bulk resistance meeting for that volume of material. Uh, after I did that test, the numbers Although they're uh, kind of consistent, they're, uh, they don't tell the whole story because as you put these materials together and put the pressure on them, the resistance is really going to be lower uh, in one respect the more that each particle of the carbon touches the other particle. And in terms of an ink, we're really interested in the surface effect as opposed to the bulk uh, material. So we put together another type of a square resistance probe. Uh, by definition, just like the last one, we've got two conductors here where the length of these conductors is equal to the spacing between them, not unlike this probe. And when we put our bulk material again inside of here and compress it, the only contact we're making to that material uh, inside of the cube are the two parallel bars of copper. So we can compress it, uh, obviously not as thin as an ink. There's still some uh, bulk resistance that we're measuring, but we're not measuring it through the material. We're measuring it from one spot on the surface, across the surface, 
to the other probe. In parallel with that, obviously, there's all of the material underneath it, but uh, you'll see from the numbers here that we get a number that I think is a little bit more representative, at least, in terms of uh, what is possible with a conductive ink. So let's take a look at those numbers. Okay, here's the, uh, the chart I put together. We have five different materials. We have the uh, activated carbon that's been uh, ball milled. It's quite fine, flowery if you will. The same material that uh, uh, we're going to measure without any uh, milling to it. I have a uh, carbon black, uh, the, uh, kind of like an acetylene black I guess some people call it. Uh, it's got a part number VXC72. I've got some 5 micron graphite and I have another graphite uh, of uh, unknown flake size. When we did the bulk uh, resistivity measurements, that's again from the, the top and the bottom of the compressed uh, in here, the amount in here, and I guess I'll point out that uh, the volumes may differ slightly, but we did weigh out a constant uh, uh, mass of material for uh, each of the tests. We see that the resistivity ranges from 0.2, or what, I'm sorry, uh, 0.1 to uh, 0.4 ohms. So that's the resistance I measured uh, uh, from the top of the material to the bottom. These numbers have already uh, subtracted out the contact resistance. If I take the, uh, the two probes from my ohm meter and short them together between the clip leads and the uh, alligator or crocodile clips as some people call them and the wiring and whatever uh, resistance is internal to the meter, I'm reading 1.1 ohms. So in this case I would have read 1.6 ohms. I have to subtract the 1.1 ohms, which is the resistance of touching the two probes together. In that, in that particular case, the, uh, the carbon added another 0.4 ohms and that's what we're reporting out. Uh, and then we did the uh, surface resistivity with the other probe. Uh, the two uh, copper strips spaced apart equal to their length and, and these are the numbers I can report out for that. What I want to uh, say here is that a couple, uh, couple of things here that uh, is not new to, um, to most of you but uh, real obvious again from this test that you can see here about a two to one improvement between the ball milled and the unmilled uh, carbon about half as much uh, resistance was measured uh, across the surface of the compressed material on the ball milled uh, uh, activated carbon. The, uh, the best results are down here uh, when we take a look at the, uh, the carbon black or even the 5 micron graphite. Now these are ohms uh, per square and I should point out that if this was an ink uh, we would not get anywhere near this but this is kind of the ideal case that you would get if you did a conductive ink that somehow was compressed and layered and rolled and applied but had no binder in it. Anything we're going to do to put a binder uh, into that graphite or that carbon is going to raise these numbers but uh, at least we've got kind of bounds on the problem that says the very 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 theoretical best you can get if you had a zero percentage binder would be in this half ohm range which would be super to uh, build a current collector and have a surface resistance resistivity of only half an ohm. Uh, the carbon black was actually a little lower so maybe uh, there's some thoughts at least in terms of resistance I'm not sure in terms of formability, workability, mixability all of the things that you have to do to make a good ink to get it to flow and to uh, you know be able to paint or roll out it actually had a lower uh, surface resistivity than the, um, the graphite. Uh, I did run a, a separate test that's not on the chart but reported here where I made a uh, 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 20 percent uh, uh, carbon black and 80 percent uh, graphite mixture, a dry mixture, I just mixed it up in a mortar and pestle like and uh, then uh, put that into the cube and uh, maybe not surprising 
we got a uh, about a 20 percent uh, lower resistance here 0.4 ohms uh, when we added 20 percent of the lower resistance carbon black what was also uh, a rewarding I guess from this test my unknown uh, graphite in terms of flake size uh, was about uh, what 60 70 percent uh, uh, more resistive than the 5 micron now it might be uh, a good idea maybe to uh, come up with some combination of all of these I guess there's uh, many recipes many variables that you could put into that equation but at least we've got some good baseline uh, numbers that I think uh, going forward if I can put a binder in here and to uh, and, and keep this type of resistance uh, in the let's say 2 to 4 ohm range I think we'd have a, a, a superior ink that could work as a, a current collector in uh, things like supercapacitors. Uh, the last note uh, that I've added here on the chart is that these numbers are all very dependent on the pressure applied. What I tried to do was to apply a consistent pressure and once I got uh, kind of a compressed or compa a highly compacted state of the material then the variability on the pressure was much less all you had to do was basically clamp it together um, the materials were all dry there was no binder in them and I didn't take any particular uh, precautions to oven dry things they were just uh, what I call ambient dry sitting here in my uh, in my shop so uh, with that uh, just wanted to share these uh, numbers with you I think we'll uh, continue uh, taking a look at building inks based on the uh, the graphite material and uh, try to keep the uh, the ratio of material to binder small so we can get close to these uh, theoretical numbers that are really low uh, uh, resistance. Uh, with that, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please uh, send them along uh, uh, via YouTube. Thanks for watching.